Well, it has finally dried up enough to get some of these warm weather crops in the ground. And that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be planting some squash and cucumbers. If this is your first time on our channel, welcome. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that bell button down below so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you're a frequent viewer of the channel, it's always good to have you back. On a video we did last week, we kind of mapped out where we're gonna be planting everything for spring. And this plot behind me in the dream garden is where we're gonna be putting those squash and cucumbers today. So this is where we're gonna be working today. I've already got it nice and cultivated there. There's a little bit of plant debris in there that I chopped up. I had some brassicas in here that were kind of underperforming and it was time just to get rid of them. So a little bit of that that's left to break down, but not a big deal. We can plant in and around that and it'll be fine. You might notice that the soil here is a little darker than it normally is. And I'll tell you why. So in the past, we used chicken manure and peanut holes that were scraped from chicken houses as a soil amendment. And that stuff works pretty good. It works a lot better in my sandier, more established plots than it does here in the dream garden. Here in the dream garden, the soil's got a lot more clay to it. And sometimes that chicken manure, especially if we get a lot of rain, can just get sticky and make these soils even harder than they already are. So what I'm doing this year instead is using some gin trash compost that we found. One of my good customers, uh, Brian, told us about this place not far down the road from us that had some really good composted gin trash, which is just you know, byproduct of the cotton ginning process. And this stuff is nice and rich and dark and uh, just, really really good stuff it's been tumbled and going through a heat and it's, it's just really good stuff so that's what we're using this year and that should do a lot better for our soil because it's not going to kind of cake up when it gets wet now i put a quite a bit of it down i put a ton of it per thousand square foot plot so we put it in there heavy the soil needs a lot of work and hopefully this should help now some folks would just take good compost like that and just layer it on top of the soil and plant right into the compost. But my goal here in addition to adding nutrients was to improve the drainage of this soil. So I like to till it in. So I incorporate it in with a tiller and you can see it there and it's already made the soil just a lot more loose and workable. I'm just really excited to grow in this this year. Let me show you what it looks like before it's incorporated. So this plot here is where we're gonna put our peppers this year on the other side of the dream garden. And I've yet to till this in. I just spread it out here. And this is about a ton of it here. And uh, we look down here at it. You see, this stuff is pretty fine. It's not been screened, I don't think, but it, it's been tumbled where you don't have a lot of chunks in there and it's just really good, rich stuff. Doesn't have much of a smell to it. it smells a little bit like a cotton gin, but um, really, really good stuff here. And uh, they even gave us the nutrient analysis on it. I don't know how well y'all can see that on camera, but it's got some nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus, some micronutrients in it. And it says per ton, there is 14.8 pounds of nitrogen available for the first crop. So we should have plenty of nutrients in that soil. So if that analysis holds true and this stuff has that much nutrient content, we shouldn't have to supplement a whole lot with additional fertilizer. This compost being tilled in at the volume that I put it in the soil should have plenty of nutrients for most of the crops we're gonna plant this year. Now back to the soon to be squash and cucumber plot. So I came out here last night and I went ahead and laid my main line out. It's always a good idea to do that. Kind of helps it lose its memory, straighten it out a little bit. Went ahead and got my filter regulator combo hooked up here in the center of that main line. So I get some nice equal distribution of water there flowing both ways. And as far as my row spacing goes, which I've already got my stakes out here, show me where I'm gonna put my drip lines. I'm gonna bury those in a minute. So we're doing 
six rows in this plot here four rows of squash two rows of cucumbers i'm putting my cucumbers on the end so kind of bookending the plot with cucumbers and that way they'll run out that way and if they crawl in the grass too much we can just hit them with the lawnmower and they'll be fine and then we've got six feet between where our cucumber row is going to be and our first squash row and then five feet between the squash rows and then over here on the end we've got six feet between this last squash row and where this cucumber row on this end is going to go so that should give us plenty of room between those rows sometimes these squash plants can get pretty dang big and, and take up five or six foot of space and make it hard to get in there and harvest them so we want to give them plenty of room because we're going to plan for success so the first thing we need to do is get our double wheel hoe with that plow set in the furrowing position make a furrow so we can bury this drip tape and then i'll show you how we're going to recycle some tape from some other plots to use on this squash plot today so we got our furrows made one there one there and four more down that way now all we need to do is get some tape in those furrows and bury that tape. Now I could take my drip tape layer attachment and make quick work of this and lay that tape and bury it all in one pass there. But I've got some lines of tape that I pulled up on these other plots that I need to reuse because some of these other plots I'm not gonna need as much tape because my spacing is gonna change with my crop rotation. So instead of laying down new tape, we're gonna recycle some tape that we use this fall and winter. So for example, this carrot plot here, which we've harvested half of, we've got this other piece here ready to plant some beans on an upcoming video. We had our carrots, we plant those on a three foot row spacing, but I'm not gonna to wanna to put my double rows of beans that close. So I'm not gonna need all of these lines here so I can take some of these lines and move them over there. Another example would be down here, this plot I showed you earlier where we just added the compost. We're gonna be putting peppers in this plot. And we had brassicas in here on a three foot row spacing. Probably gonna put our peppers about four feet apart. So we're not gonna need all these lines here. And it'll be good to kind of get them out of the way, get them back in use. So we're gonna grab some of these lines as well and recycle them over where we're putting our squash today. So I'll show you how I'm gonna do this. So this is the row start from this line that I'm not using currently hooked into the main line here. So first thing I'm gonna do is just take this row start out and then we can move that. Now we can still got this hole in our main line. Now we could leave that hole if our spacing was gonna be the same to where we were gonna use that hole but I don't really know how my spacing is going to work out yet on this plot. So I'm going to take these little, they come on a tree like this. These little things called goof plugs, which are used to plug the main line. And that's another way we can recycle the main line. We put that goof plug in there and then we can punch more holes in here as our row spacing changes and we don't have to worry about this leaking. So then we take this line here that we stole from that other plot. Our row start is still connected. We wanna make sure this tape is with the emitters facing upwards here. And then right in front of where this furrow is, we're just gonna take our hole punch here. And in the blue line, punch a hole, stick this, let me clean that off a little bit. Stick this row start in there and we're good to go. So I'm gonna get busy grabbing the five more lines we'll need for this plot here, lay them out in that furrow, and then we'll turn the water on and let those lines inflate before we bury them. Now, not all my garden plots of the 10 I have are the same size, but all these plots in the dream garden are the same size, 30 by 35. And that really makes it easy for me to move drip lines from one plot to the next and rotate things around, reuse that drip tape, 
and all that good stuff. So if you can standardize your garden plot somewhat to be relatively the same size, it's gonna make things a lot easier on you when you go to replant. So our lines are in the furrow, but as you can see there, there's a little bit of kind of waviness to those lines when they're flat like that. And you don't wanna bury them like this unless you've got that drip tape layer that's keeping tension on that line. If you try to bury them like this, they could flip over, the emitters will be the wrong side up, they can twist. So what we do is we're gonna hook up our water hose here, turn this on, let those lines inflate, and they'll bury nice and straight that way. Inflating those lines before you bury them is also a good idea so you can check for leaks. So you see right there, I've got a little leak I need to fix and um, I could have nicked that with a hoe or something could have chewed a hole in it who knows what caused it but we can take a coupling and we can fix that up pretty quick so we cut out that little piece of tape that was cut put us a coupling on there crisis averted now it's time to take that plow set in the healing position and cover up this drip tape and I'm gonna use my high arch wheel hoe to do that All right, all right, all right. Now it is finally time to get some of these seeds in the soil. I bet y'all were getting worried that we weren't actually gonna plant anything in this video. But we've gotta make the proper preparations before we plant. And of all crops where drip tape is really important for you know getting water to those roots effectively, helping to prevent diseases and then weeds between our row, Cucurbits are certainly one of those. So we always like to put drip tape underneath our squash for those reasons. So let's talk about the varieties we're gonna be planting today real quick like. So for the cucumbers, we're gonna plant the stone wall on one end of this plot. Had really, really good success with this last year. This is one of the gynoecious varieties that has mostly all female flowers. Also has some really good disease resistance definitely a winner in my book and then we're planting this new one we just added called diamede heard a lot of good things about this one and uh, so we're going to plant this on the other end i may plant some pickling varieties later in my succession planting in another month or so but right now i'm gonna go with two of these slicers and then as far as the squash goes we're going to plant a whole row of these gold prize squash this is a straight neck variety, grew these last year, really, really good producer. And then my favorite patty pan variety, which is the sunburst squash, gonna plant a whole row of those. Then we're gonna plant this crook neck here called Gold Star, which is supposed to be really, really productive. It's got some nice disease resistance to it. Never grown this one before, but really excited about it. And then lastly, this green zucchini here called Spineless Supreme. I grew Spineless Beauty last year, it did really well, and I'm looking forward to this Spineless Supreme, which has some improved disease resistance to it. So I'm not getting to plant all the varieties I wanna plant this year in this first planting of squash. I'm just gonna plant four of them, but in my second succession planting, I'll be able to plant more varieties and do some more experimentation. You know, we added a lot of good squash varieties this year and i want to try them all but we're just going to try a few here and then we'll try some more when we do our next planting of squash in another month or so for my cucumbers here this pack has 50 seeds in it and i'm going to plant my cucumbers because we're growing them vertically i'm going to plant them closer than one feet apart so i'm not going to pay attention to where the emitters are here you can see there's two little furrows, two little mini furrows that my high arch created when it was covering this drip tape. And this is nice because uh, it gives me a little indicator of where I'm going to put my cucumbers and where I'm going to put my trellis later. So I'm going to plant my cucumbers on this side of the drip tape right here in this little mini furrow. I'll just lay the seeds in there about four to six inches apart and then we'll come back with a rake and cover them up. And then on this side over here is where I'll put my T-post and my Horta Nova trellis, which we'll put up another day. That way, with my trellis behind my cucumbers here, it will force them to grow out this way and not that way so they're getting into my squash plants. They'll grow out this way towards the outside of the garden 
which is the plan here. And then on the squash here, we're going to want to plant these on top of the emitters. Now, there's emitters every 12 inches along this tape here. And I know 12 inches is too close for squash, but I like to make sure I'm going to have a good stand. So I'm going to put, I've got 30 seeds here. This is a 30 foot row, so there's 30 emitters. I'm going to put a seed on top of every emitter, and then I'll come back later and thin them to two or three foot apart. But I like to plant them thick, make sure I get a good stand, and then come back and thin them later. So I'll just take one of these seeds here, and I'll just set it down right on top of that emitter. And I'll come back here and cover them up, kind of pack them down a little bit to get some good seed to soil contact. And that, folks, is all there is to it. Four rows of squash planted, two rows of slicing cucumbers planted, and I'll let this drip tape run for a little while to kind of soak that seed bed. If it looks like we're not getting any rain in the next few days, I may throw the overhead sprinkler on them tonight just to kind of ensure some good moist soil for germination, but then we can let the drip tape do the rest of the work of water and from here on out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And if you did enjoy this one, check out these couple videos right here. I think you'll really enjoy those as well. See you next time.